Welcome inside the Frerich Center as the Duquesne Dukes visit the number 19th ranked Dayton Flyers. Welcome, Alex Mikus with Renee DeGraff. And Renee, this is game two of the series that we saw in Pittsburgh October the 8th. Duquesne able to do something no one's done this year, and that's take a set off the Dayton Flyers. How good has this UD team been? UD has absolutely been on fire, but the Dukes are going to enter that court and say, you know what, that set that we grabbed from the Flyers last time wasn't a fluke. It was a close set. The Dukes showed a lot of heart, and I think they're going to come out on this court and say, you know what, Flyers, we're ready to go. That third set when we got you wasn't a fluke. So we look at our players to watch, brought to you by Fifth Third. The Dukes uh, on that uh, day, eighth day in October, they were led by Elizabeth Trell, and she's been doing it all year. She had uh, solid career at George Washington, but since she has come to Duquesne, she has been their go-to and been one of the best outside hitters in the league. And talking about top quality outside hitting on the other side of the net, Lexi Almodovar, really something special and now number one at UD. You know, she's in such great company. It's not easy to be, easy to be the number one kill leader when you're up against people like Jamie Peterson, Elena Turner, a a lot of great athletes that have gone before, but you know what, Lexi, her perseverance, her strength, her goals, everything. She deserves to be the number one hitter right now. Honorable mention all American a year ago, her stats this year, something else, and over the weekend, passing Faye Barhorst in that top spot for kills all time at Dayton. It's a big reason for the Flyers' success and sitting on top of the A-10 standings. Coaches in the building here tonight, and the starters for Coach Opperman and the Dukes, uh, William Martin, uh, Ariel Helm, Carson Henschen, Madison Grimm, Elizabeth Drelling, Avery Hobson, and Jordan Robertson. 61 times these two teams have met up, and it has been a series dominated by Dayton. But 3-1 the last time out uh, in Pittsburgh, it was a Dayton win. 25-11, uh, 25-17, but Renee highlighted it. That third set, 25-22, the Dukes are able to get the Flyers uh, before Dayton won that final set, 25-20. Dayton happy to be home as uh, we get a, we're able to sweep Fordham. And uh, for Duquesne, well, uh, they are coming off their first weekend in conference play where they lost the weekend series they have been splitting one and one but uh, two games uh, two matches at Davidson they fell both Friday and Saturday and the Dukes will go back to serve with Martin sophomore center from Columbia South Carolina Underway here at 5 o'clock. Hope you're getting off work. Maybe you got a few minutes left and you're just deciding to cheat. Olympia Yates starts the scoring and she will go to the bench as Kaminsky will serve and Sarkissian. And the Sarkissian comes in. I wonder if uh, we just saw a little preview of what the Duke strategy is going to be. They served to Alexei Almodovar, trying to get her out of sync. She passed on a dime and Yates was able to score. There's Carson Henschen, her right hand. And was that Helm on the cleanup? Or I don't know if that ball necessarily even got back across, but Ariel Helm there, a junior from Indianapolis, Indiana. This is Avery Hobson serving for Duquesne. That has been probably the biggest issue for Duquesne on the season. They're very aggressive serving, but in, in, in sort of their approach and going about it at the service line, they, 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 the result has been a lot of service errors. Yeah, that really breaks momentum when they have a nice hit, the Flyers weren't able to handle the ball and then go back and miss the serve, it just kills momentum. Gabby Arroyo was a part of a, just an aces party. The last time these two teams met, Sarkissian on the block as Drelling denied. 20 aces, Renee. The That's last time these two teams, Dayton had 20 aces in that first matchup against Duquesne. That's incredible. We'll see if Steve Oppermine was able to, well, there we go. And There's another one. There's another one. 
I would think after the 20 aces, Steve Opp Opperman would have been working on some serve receive. But I give credit to Gabby Arroyo. She's got a very effective float serve. It moves a lot. And she picks up her first ace here tonight. She had three in that first matchup. It's a good swing from Carson Henshin. And she's able to score it for the Dukes. Henshin, a hometown product in New Knoxville, Ohio, about an hour north of Dayton. And here's another Southwest Ohio native in Madison Grimm serving for Duquesne. Lexi. We'll play that over here. Drilling. Lexi again. Big hit. And another kill for number four in red. A little glimpse of why she is the flyer kill leader. She does off speed very well. They read her on the first swing, but then she comes back with a full power and, and just deflects off the block for a kill. Yeah, if you're going to get the top spot as she goes back to serve here, you have to have a lot of shots. <laughs> there is no doubt about it. And Lexi has got a bunch of tools on her belt. And this is another player that has been scoring at a high clip. Seventh in the conference in kills. That's Elizabeth Drelling. She has been spectacular for Duquesne. Nice crossbody shot. I think her shoulders had the Flyers move their block in towards middle of the court. And she saw the adjustment and went down the line. First time I've called the name of Grace Kristofik as she's able to keep that one up. Grimm will play over for the Dukes. And Dayton going towards Kaylin McNeil on the outside. And McNeil, after hitting over, trying to block, and it's Emerson Schramm who gets the point. Kaylin McNeil seeing some action here early. Christophic, transfer from George Mason. Here's Sarkissian, and we highlighted Lexi Sarkissian at the start. The and Dayton, without question, they know who they're going to, but that other option, Rihanna Sarkissian, her numbers this year, it has been an explosion when discussing her junior campaign. It's so much fun to watch. I mean, last year she was used primarily as a right side hitter, running running a lot of slides. There's Kate McNeil. She says thank you to the Dukes for that assist. A little bit of an overpass. She's on her toes. Great way to kill a rally. Well, it comes off a serve from Sarkisian, who has sort of been able to fill into that role. It was so well done by Amelia Moore in middle blocking. And she has just, she hasn't missed a beat. Here she is stepping up from the back row off the Robertson hit. And McNeil again finding some success early on the outside. It's a nice, powerful shot. I'm surprised the Dukes got underneath that. I thought it might have clipped a little bit of the floor, but apparently not. Uh, but the power that was on that swing, the Dukes couldn't handle it. Now it's three straight for UD. Duquesne, this is something similar to what they saw on Saturday at Davidson. They got off to a really slow start. Down the line, and it's out. Emerson Schramm, it was a good idea, but the Pittsburgh PA native wasn't able to come up with the goods, and Dayton now plus five on the scoreboard. Sarkissian been a big part of this Dayton run, and it ends on the right hand of Elizabeth Drelling. Smart set by Kristoffic to change up the change up the offense that uh, attacks the Flyers. Drelling had a nice shot from the right side. It is sort of shocking. And you look at the numbers for Drelling and George Washington, and then staying in conference, coming to Duquesne. As Tori Newton comes on to serve, Elena Yates. Boy, she was really good over the weekend. Coming off a seven kill, four block performance. And Dayton has got some serious pieces up front. But going back to Drelling, she has been the marquee player for the Dukes. Elizabeth, or Alyssa Miller, excuse me, serving for you. Reigning player of the week in the Atlantic 10. Here's McNeil pushing to the back row. Schramm. Kaminsky steps up. Miller 
Now Motowar. And Renee is sort of incredible. We're trying to paint the picture of what's been the season for UD. And here we're, I don't know, 15 points in and and now 16, we finally mentioned the name of Alyssa Miller, who's the player of the week in the conference. It has just been uh, uh, another outstanding year for UD, and Karis Kaminsky's a part of it as she does it defensively there, keeping it alive. Shroud from the tight end, and a point that really didn't belong to Dayton. It's another tally for UD as now they're up 12-5. Chris Kaminsky just showed why she was the Defensive Player of the Week. Uh, she's kind of an unsung hero, as is Alyssa Miller, who's also gotten Player of the Week recognition. But there are so many solid players on the Flyers squad. A little bit of a short set. Trump couldn't quite handle it. And I think Steve Opperman's going to take a time yeah. out. We're going to take it with him. Renee, you said that you wanted to see Chris Kaminsky Make a couple of awesome digs. Well, she's already off to a good start. I love defensive plays. You know, there's a great picture of Carissa Kaminsky on the Flyer website, the Flyer Volleyball website, where she is airborne, getting the ball up, and just, just shows such great athleticism, as she does every night she's out here on the hospital court. Great Listen, pass. Listen, Miller gets us back underway. Here's Aaliyah Williams denied as it was Robertson and Hobson on the cover. Leah Williams also had a really nice weekend at Fordham. Maybe, maybe her best weekend for UD. Transfer from LSU. Lanny Yates, she's been dominant here early, but no, it's Robertson's able to keep that up, and what a point! Grace Kristoffic, look what I found. You know what? We always used to say that the Nets there use it, and that's exactly what the Dukes just did. The Flyers were underneath the ball. It clipped the net, just, just changed the angle enough to really mess them up. Let's see if that gives Duquesne some momentum. Aaliyah Williams says no. <laughs> she comes flying in on the slide for the score. Now she can really get up, Renee. And Williams there doubles things up here for Dayton. 14-7. Emily Young, first time she's been able to come in. She'll serve. And Dayton doing it defensively. Strom not able to beat the block as Motivar and Yates were there. Solid block, put up a great wall. I think Lexi knew it was down right away. Yates followed it back to the other side of the court, but the Dukes couldn't keep it alive. Dayton hitting 538 here early. Hitting the antenna was Avery Hobson. Hobson, a sophomore from Fishers, Indiana. One thing that I, is a big plus for Duquesne, and also sort of another, uh, you, you, Think about their back and forth season. They're still very much in the thick of things and trying to get a spot in the A-10 championships. This, that ball's long. Duquesne, let's see if they challenge. No. Well, we have the it, R2 got the, R2 made the call. Yeah, so it is going to be point Duquesne as that was a touch. As Scott Burnett, our referee one, and when they mentioned the R2 jumping in there, it's Dan Litterall. Shane White and Lawrence Walden with the flags. Here's Lexi off the Martin serve. Henshin playing over. There's Kaminsky diving again. And Dayton will play the free ball across for Alyssa Miller. Helm is long and Chris Kaminsky. Sometimes it looks as if she's just putting out an arm. And it is all instincts and reaction, Renee, but she does it so often to where she's just, she's just on another level. Yeah. And she, her ability to read, it is a lot of reaction, no doubt. But her ability to read the shoulders, read even the hands of the hitters, is what makes her stand out. She just uh, is able to see that hit coming at her. Nice job by Martin there defensively. And the pass just a little bit off, and Sarkissian 
unable to connect. And Duquesne a much needed point. But this is a young Duquesne's, Duquesne squad. Play quite a few sophomores. And it would mean a lot for them to play in the A-10 championships. Sarkissian heavy there as Hobson best server talking about this group from Pittsburgh currently ninth and aces per set in the league that's long and Dayton up by eight Gabby Arroyo back to serve Dayton for the weekend, 25-17, 25-21, 25-8. Friday against Fordham. And then it was 25-17, 25-18, 25-17 again. And Gabby Arroyo, her second ace, and that one fell off a cliff. It sure did. Drelling, I'm sure she thought her arms were right there behind the ball, and some wind current just came in, just knocked it right out of path. Arroyo has been known for her career of getting on runs from the service line. Here's Helm trying to put one down. Kaminsky again. Arroyo able to play across. Grimm setting up Henshin. Where's Alyssa Miller going? It's Amotovar is able to find that going down the line. Henshin across for the Dukes. Back to Lexi. And Duquesne defending with Ariel Helm who is number one in the conference and blocks per set, and she gets another one here. It's a little bit of miscommunication on the flyer's side of the court. I think Sarkissian needs to make sure, or needs to get out of the way so Kaminsky can take those second balls when Miller captures the first. And there's Almodovar, just with tons of power, found the seam in the block. Lexi. Mention taking over a top spot and kills. She was honored before the game. And presented with a plaque. Here she is serving. From the back row, another kill. So much power. That is a full body hit. You know, we talk so much about how hit our hitters use their full extension, their big arms and everything. But you walk, you watch Lexi Almodovar just pike with her entire body, just her abs. Everything gets into that head. Well, another big reason for her fantastic career at UD is being able to score from the back row of what we just saw. Yes, outside hitter, you see her at the front of the net and, and stacking up the points. But Renee, I, I, would, I would like to throw it out there. I, I think she is one of the best in the country. I mean, just in general, but like scoring from the back row. It would be an interesting statistic, and it, I, don't, I don't know that it exists, but how many of her kills have come from the back row? You know, and credit to her setters. Alyssa Miller, her previous setter last year also, it was Alyssa. Um, you know, the previous setters, they, they dish it out to Lexi and she knows the, the communication, nonverbal communication between the setters and Lexi just are, is top of the charts. Their communication, they know when to expect it. Um, Lexi knows when Miller's gonna deliver it. Um, it's, it's, it's canny, it's uncanny. Tim Horsman has to really like how his team has started here. Flyers on top by 10, and an ace. Boy, this is starting to feel uh, very similar to what we saw earlier in the month at UK. Now, we're, we're a long ways from 20 aces, but Dayton is really picking them up here and serving. Lexi changing speeds there. Here's Henshin. Oh, that's an excellent dig, and she'll get it back. And she'll score it. I mean, just from the serve to her defense and then transitioning into offense. Folks, this is the whole package. And she, she's got it. It really is. You know, and Lexi's picking apart the Duke serve receive with Hobson.
back there that she just served to. Tough pass that uh, Martin was able to handle. Kaylin McNeil, another kill, her third. And she is three for four here in the first set. And she has blistered that ball down the line. Yeah, the Dukes really need to put up a decent serve receive, decent first pass so that uh, Martin can run an offense. And that's not it. Thompson has to play over and did well, but McNeil will try to close things out here in the first. And she is able to do just that. So bang, bang, boom. Dayton 25-11 to get things started. And we move to the second set here on ESPN+. Plus. It is important to know that the Dayton Flyers still without Taylor Russell, who has been battling an injury, but also Brooke Smith is not in the lineup here tonight. And she's, there's Taylor Russell on your screen, first team all conference a year ago. But right next to her in that seven jersey, Kaylin McNeil, she has come up big with Smith and Russell out. Uh, a, a really strong first set. Yeah, she really has uh, stepped into Taylor's shoes very, very well, given a diversity of shots, off-speed shots, keeping the Dukes on their heels, not quite sure how McNeil's going to attack. She hit 800. She had four kills in that first set. You see Brooke Smith supporting her team. She had 10 kills, hit 280 in that victory against Fordham. Over the weekend, uh, back to action. Hobson trying to score. Kaminsky says not so fast. Oh, how about that point? Okay, not to be too detailed, but that is a kill. That will count <laughs> as a kill for Lexi Almodovar. So not only does she swing over the shoulder and get some get some kills, she does it with her underhand free balls. Emily Young to serve for UD. Well, right now, Duquesne is just having some issues in dealing with Dayton from the service line. Leah Williams trying to put one down. Helm jumping high. Was well defended by Elena Yates. It's a good shot by Hobson, but we play on, and guess who gets it? Number four in red. You know, that that's such an interesting play. Lexi actually had started her approach before Miller set the ball, and she had to, Lexi had to jump backwards because the set wasn't quite accurate. It just shows the athleticism that Almodovar possesses. So after a really strong first set, Dayton's been able to grab the first two points here in the second set. Down the line, Hobson, Dayton able to deal with it, and they come back with Lexi, and the Flyers just in complete control. A high flat, it's really a, an interesting shot for somebody that comes in as playing 5-8 against people who are much taller than she is. She gets trapped with the ball too close to the net. That's a common shot these days, hit it high off the block. Already eight blocks for the player of the year in the conference last season. Leah Williams, oh! A punch with that right hand. Was able to tie her career high on Saturday with eight kills against Fordham. And maybe even a stronger showing on Friday. She had six kills, seven digs, three blocks, and hit 500 against the Rams. Emily Young trying to make it five in a row as we get things started here in the second. Miller. Going to Yates, and that's in. And Dayton, they have just been racking up the points. You know, Ariel Helm is in a really tough position. She's the middle for the Dukes. She's got Almodovar on Dayton's left side. She's got Yates in the middle. You've got Williams running right side and scoring. She doesn't know where to go. She doesn't know where to block. She's got to totally react off the set. And Miller's running such a fast offense. The Dukes can't close their blocks. Helm can't get to the outside block. What a weekend it was for Alyssa Miller. Here's Hobson going at Young. Miller finding Lexi. And 
the Dukes able to find the floor thanks to the block of Henshin. Carson Henshin and Ariel Helm, perfect spot. Again, a little bit too tight of a set, but again, we're going, uh, we've got a 5'8 hitter going up against a 6'1 six six blocker, and that's a, that's a very unusual overpass from the Flyers. Typically, in fact, in the first set, their serve-receive passing was spot on. Elizabeth Drelling able to capitalize from it. And Hobson goes into the net. But looking at Miller, and you mentioned this fast-paced offense, Alyssa Miller, 68 assists in six sets of work for that Friday-Saturday matchup against Fordham, including 38 on Friday. And once again, Drelling able to score it. She leads Duquesne with three kills, and Aliyah Williams is slow to get up. And now I didn't see what happened with the grad transfer. She's talking with her head coach. She wants to stay in the game. Walking a little gingerly on her right leg. I don't know if knees hit underneath the net or maybe a little twist of an ankle, but she's showing some real fortitude staying out there. And Lexi will take care of it. Get, give Williams a little bit of a break. We're going to have her sub out now, which is a typical sub in this rotation with Gabby Arroyo coming in. Boy, Aaliyah does not look comfortable. And it's that right leg. So we'll keep an eye on 22 in red. Meanwhile, Gabby Arroyo has been just ace after ace after ace. And that is three here uh, early on. And she doubles up the Dukes 8-4 in our second set. Duquesne able to handle the serve there, but Dayton defending in front of the net. It was Sarkisian and Almodovar. Miller heads up, and the center able to score it. It was a real smart play. The first time we've seen Miller attack the ball, a little bit of a, an oversight by the Dukes, not calling out, making everybody aware that Miller is indeed a, an active hitter. And an overpass, Sarkissian, you cannot do that with Sarkissian at the top of the net in the middle. She's going to do exactly what she did and break a board on the other side. A lot of power. Sarkissian, top 10 in the conference in three different categories. Hitting percentage, blocks, and points. Here's Henshin. It was head first and dive from Kaminsky. And... Well, Munavar is able to convert as Lexi continues to rack up the points. She's got 10 now, first player in double digits. And it's Dayton 11-4 on the score line. And how about the athleticism, athleticism of Miller right there in that last place? Kaminsky got it up high enough, Miller got low, put the ball right down. But Drelling's going to say, listen, we've got to stop this and we've got to bring the momentum back to the Duke side. She picks up her fifth kill. And she was able to go to the top ladder there. And that snaps a 5-0 Dayton run. And Duquesne, they need to find some offense here. Kristoffic will serve. Cross court, and here's El Motivar and rare miss. Duquesne, Friday, they... From a number standpoint, you would think that they'd have a comfortable win at Davidson, but, but it wasn't the case as they hit 336 as a team, but they lost in five sets. There's Omotovar. That was excellent from Schramm just to keep that ball off the net. Duke's able to play over. Here's Sarkissian denied. They'll go to the near side, and there's the defense from the Dukes, and a big block, it's Jordan Robertson. 
That was an ideal block, an ideal placement. The Flyers did a nice job getting low and underneath their hitter, but that's just such an open spot. Tough to defend when your block is perfectly aligned. Kristoffek still serving. There she is off the Sarkisian hit. Trillin trying to put one down. Dayton comes back and got a good rally here. Miller coming down Motomar. Grimm lifts high. Trillin just has to play across. And Miller, thank you very much. And now Motivar gets the assist for that one. Lexi stayed in the middle, so from the Duke's perspective, they were gearing up to block Lexi as an attacker out of the middle, but Miller said, this pass is too sweet. I've got to take it down myself. Here is the grad student from Noblesville, Indiana, to serve. And another one. <laughs> Yeah, her, her serve is so fast. I think Schramm could have gotten a little bit better, in better position to save that one. But regardless, um, Lexi's serve is just keeping the Dukes off balance. She's got a float serve. She's got an underspin serve. There's another float going at. Moy Dayton. And we mentioned the 20 aces that they put up against Duquesne. And so far, so good. As they're up 14-7, Duquesne will take a timeout. We press pause. The Flyers, five aces for the Dayton Flyers so far in this match. And actually, Motovar has been able to rack up two of them. As Dayton already up a set, 25-11 in that first. They're up by seven here as we get back underway. Chris Kaminsky unable to handle the power of Jordan Robertson and the Dukes will bring on Tori Newton to serve going off Elizabeth Drelly Dukes have yet to really make a run in this match Miller in a joust and it's a little off from Kaminsky and it fell right to Robertson. I have to think that that was a point of emphasis from Steve Opperman saying, listen, Alyssa Miller's in the front row. Let's get a block on her. She had a double block on her that last ball. Killing McNeil, a heavy touch, and that is three in a row for the Duke. So Duquesne trying to work their way back in. This is a really nice response off the timeout. And it's come from Tori Newton out of St. Mary's, Pennsylvania, freshman. Miller going to Sarkissian. Miller, and that's off the antenna. Renee Duquesne finding some momentum. I, I kind of like it, Alex. This is a good test right now for the Flyers. Let's see if they can buckle up a little bit. And, well, there you go. You don't even have to. Um, that's Tori Newton sprays you, one out. You hate to kill your own rally with a miss serve. You really do. But Opperman's giving them a lot of encouragement, saying, no problem. Let's just pass one ball right here. Sarkisian will serve. The junior with the right hand going at Newton. Oh, excellent. Jordan Robertson off of... Fantastic find from Grace Kristoffic. Yeah, started with the pass. Newton put it on a dime. If the passes are on a dime, you can run your offense, and that's exactly what happened there. Nice little three set. Robertson will serve. Here's Elaney Yates. Newton able to chase it down. Kristoffic the free ball. Miller looking back towards Yates, and Elena has got this point. Kristoffic tried to pull back. She just tried so hard. But like we talked about earlier, when you're in a defensive position and you're ready to react, you just have to react. And you go for it and realize it's out a little bit too late. Kristoffic just couldn't pull her arms back. Here's Alyssa Miller. Tops in the Atlantic 10 in assists. And she's right up there. And talking about the country as she serves in Avery Hobson. Uh, 
able to score that for Duquesne. But Miller, Renee, <laughs> not, not just you know trying to be the best setter in the league, but trying try to be the best setter in the NCAA. She is ninth in assists per set. Um, racking, and I think this is an old statistic. I think this is uh, through October 27th. Well, not too old, but 10.93 assists per set. That ranks her ninth nationally. And I haven't dug up her kills per set as a setter, too. That would be an interesting statistic as well. Well, she, she at the beginning of the year, was scoring at a high, high clip for a setter. Martin goes into the net. We'll see what Young is able to do here for Dayton. Flyers were up by seven uh, just a few minutes ago. Oh, Helm able to push that down. Wow. And Helm showing you what she's capable of. She's so good at the front of the net defensively, and she got a great block there. Yeah. Amelia Martin did a super job pulling that ball out of what was going to be a disastrous net ball, and she was able to save it so Helm could put it down, and then she got the block. Miller had to go a long ways. And Motivar, oh, that was just in, in sort of desperation mode. Lexi finds something and is able to put a really challenging ball over in a difficult spot, and Dayton gets a, a much-needed point. A little combination, I think, Lexi's high IQ of volleyball. She knew that the setter obviously probably wasn't going to play defense, and she was right. Martin released early from her defensive position and caught her cheating up a little bit, and all Martin could do was get a hand up, and the Dukes couldn't control it after that first touch. Kaminsky going to Drelling. Here is Helm, and this is going to be point Duquesne. Off the touch, scored for the Flyers. That was sort of an interesting play right in front of our R1. Almost looked as if Helm sort of whiffed. Mm -hmm. But Graham now serving. Oh, look out. You know, t give credit to Sarkissian right there to freeze the block. Watch how this pass. The pass was on a dime. Miller takes a quick glance to see where her hitters are. Sarkissian draws two blockers, leaves no blockers to defend Le Lexi Almodovar, the wrong person to leave blockless. Arroyo has had a lot of success today serving. Keeps it going as Sarkissian able to drill it off Martin. And, and that all starts with the serve, Renee. And Gabby Arroyo is giving Duquesne just all they can handle. Yeah, her serves are so effective. And Sarkissian, great arm great arm swing control. Uh, and there's another ace for Arroyo. Four. Four aces for the sophomore out of Miami, Florida. And we get a timeout, Duquesne. And Duquesne, I, I think this has probably got to be the most frustrating part. And Renee, it's another reason for Dayton's success because you can talk about trying to deal with the serve but it's not until you actually get out there and you know Dayton put 20 aces on the Dukes last time Taylor Russell had eight of them she's not in uh for tonight's match but Gabby Arroyo is and it's it's just she is a tough tough player to deal with when she's serving yeah, she's got a nice repertoire of serve varieties, if you will. She's got a floater. She's got a spin serve. And just like a pitch in baseball, these balls are moving on you, and you can't just lock your feet, lock your arms, and you've got to follow the path of the ball. You know, they've, the Flyers have six aces. The Dukes don't have any yet. And I know that this is a very, very frustrating thing for Steve Opperman. Arguably, serve-receive is, again, arguably, but serve-receive is the most difficult, or one of the top three most difficult skills in volleyball. Let's see if Gabby Arroyo can keep it going. Going to Drelling, handled it there. Henshin and Dayton this time was ready and defending at the front of the net. Nice block, hips to the middle of the court, fell right into the campfire. There should have been a Duke there to put a touch on that ball. Two L's and Lexi and Liana. And Liana 
just dominating right now at the front of the net. That is, what, her third or fourth overpass kill? And again, it looks easy, but it's not. You really have got to have your, your arm swing control. But I'm impressed by the way Arroyo is going after Drawling. She is picking on her. Again, one of the top hitters from the Dukes. We saw at the beginning of the match how the Duquesne squad was going after Almodovar, trying to get her out of sync on the hitting. Now we're seeing the Dukes adjust their serve-receive right now. So Drawling moves up. Hobson's in that position five. And Hobson... Uh, that, that Martin did really well to keep that alive and Henshin able to play over. But Dayton is just playing on. And it is set point as uh, Manovar gets her 13th kill of this match. Boy, she has been busy this afternoon. You know, it felt like Duquesne was getting back into it. And then Gabby Arroyo comes to the service line, and this is it. That's it, folks. That is, that, that is all Gabby Arroyo serving. And well, there's Lexi Erliana. It's Dayton with all the momentum as we go to the third. As brought to you by White Allen. Uh, Dayton has just been steady. And there's a moment. And in that second set that Duquesne got onto a roll, but Renee, really from the get-go, it, it, it's all UD. It sure has been, from their serves to their attacks to their blocks, the variety of attacks with Miller coming in, getting a few kills, Sarkissian killing the overpass, and then the very last point that we saw, Alexi Almodovar killing on overpass. I'm sure Steve Opperman is asking her, their team, his team, to keep the passes on his side of the net so Martin and Kristoffic can run their offense. But when you put a ball that breaks the plane of the net, you've got the hitters like the Flyers have. They just, they, the, the Dukes need to put on helmets. They're, they're just gonna get crushed. Yeah, Dayton's had a lot of easy points and a lot of that also comes from serves. And, and look at the ace category, our stats brought to you by Allegiant. Dayton, another uh, match where they're excelling at the service line. Yeah, they sure are. And, and that puts the Dukes totally out of system. If they're not overpassed, their passes are put, are, are in a position where Martin and Christophe can't really run three lanes. And then it becomes very easy for the Flyers to determine where they need to set up their block. Their defense is easily set up around that block. And their in, in transition passing is also very, very strong tonight. Outside of the Flyers' serve reception, their transitional passing is strong. Miller just is, she has four lanes, basically. If Almodovar's in the back row, she has four lanes to run, and the Dukes can't keep up with it. Dayton trying to make it uh, 21 straight uh, in victories over uh, the Duquesne Dukes. Meanwhile, Duquesne, the last time these two teams faced, was able to take the third set off of Dayton and like highlighted before, uh, Flyers only losing one set in conference play so far this year. It's been 14 straight for UD. Their only loss of the season coming to Marquette. And 21 and one, 11 and 0 in league play. They sit number 19 in the country. And the Flyers have just been a force. But Duquesne will try and dig back to what was October the 8th and that victory they had, a small victory, but still I, I, I think that does speak volumes to what they're capable of. And also trying to play in the Atlantic 10 championships for the first time in five years. And Duquesne, very difficult stretch coming home as they'll have Loyola for Friday and Saturday, then at home against VCU. Dayton wraps up the season against George Mason and then St. Louis. Flyers are on the road at GMU this Friday and Saturday. Of course, Dayton will be hosting the Atlantic 10 Championships. So we look towards November. Grace Christophic will serve, and that's out. Renee, for you, from a coaching standpoint, you're always excited about aces. 
but you know, that's 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 one. I, I the six for Dayton, yes, but there's the, those six service errors. I mean, you're you're looking at at 12 points right there in this game. Exactly, exactly. And you know, every philosophy. That's a great shot from Drawling, right side. Uh, for the Dukes, but every coach has a little bit different philosophy. Some like the one-to-one -one ratio, aces to errors. Some want it a little bit higher. Some, again, it depends on the strength of your individual servers, but when you have six service errors, especially to start a game, it really just kills any kind of momentum that you might have. And there's a little bit of an overpass. Slight mistake from Lexi Almodovar. Duquesne saying, you know, we can attack those overpasses also. Miller's in the back row, so she couldn't go up and block that particular play. Tori Newton serving. And Duke's being led by Elizabeth Drelling with six kills. Also hitting 500. Here's Kaylin McNeil at a play over. Duquesne wanted a double. I think that they might have had a point, and Sarkissian able to score. Yeah, that's the only time a double can be called is when it crosses the net. And I think uh, I think the official said, no, it was spinning, but it wasn't a double. And, you know, just because a ball spins does not indicate a double hit. Man, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, Renee, that's something you can't review. You cannot review that, correct. That's a judgment call. And that's a great pass. That's what, excuse me, that's what Duquesne needs to do to run their offense. Well, and, and for Robertson, it's even bigger, and that was Gabby Arroyo's serve. So we know what she's been to, to Dayton this afternoon, and uh, they're able to get out of it. And Sarkissian here. Strong. There is Arroyo. Miller setting up. Mohamed Omar. And Dayton able to Tie things up at three. It's nice to see Russell Taylor entering the court. Yes, it is. And she has had to deal with some injuries in this 2024 campaign. And Ariel Helm, that is a really nice point for the Duquesne middle blocker. Does a smart play. I think they saw that Russell was new into the match. I was curious to know what the Flyers are going to do. I don't think Williams is going to be on the court anymore. They seem to have wrapped her ankle. So I think Coach Horseman's got to deal with a new lineup. And there's another miss serve. Very frustrating when you've got a little bit of momentum. You can't capitalize on it. And yeah, Martin goes into the net. And for Dayton, they'll look back towards Sarkissian. Seven errors and no aces. That's just the second error for Dayton. As they've been able to produce six aces. Sarkisian will take a seat. Dayton that front row. Russell and Yates. And here's Miller. Oh, picture perfect was able to find the open space in the corner. And Alyssa Miller, another kill. Beautiful pass. Miller's aware enough. Again, high volleyball IQ. She knows the Dukes are playing a middle back defense. And as soon as she probably intentionally telecast a little short tip, uh, their left back crashed and left the left corner open. Drelling down the line. Elizabeth Drelling. Eight of her last nine games. She's had double digits, double digit kills. Mentioned her performance against Davidson over the weekend and that Friday night. There were five Dukes in double digits. Here's Elena Yates, who's had herself a nice day. Five kills for the grad senior, uh, grad student, excuse me, out of Iowa. Dayton and Duquesne even up here in the third, but Flyers comfortable in the first two sets. Emily Young. Trelling. Nice wrist shot. Miller able to deal with it. Out of our over for 
Dayton, Henshin denied. Back to Drelling. And Emily Young on the cover. It's Lexi and Martin sliding in too much. And Dayton with the lead. Going back to sort of Lexi and you know, what we just witnessed and, and another point is she's got 16 kills now. She's at 393. She's as Emily Young serving. Free ball played over by Hobson and when it rains it pours. Duquesne now down two. But Vene, outside hitter, I mean, not only tops in the league in, in, in kills percent, but she's sixth in hitting percentage in the conference, hitting over 311, especially with all the attempts she gets, is another ace for Dayton and Emily Young. And, uh, her statistics are impressive. One statistic that we haven't talked about very much is her reception, her serve reception. She receives 955. You don't get many aces off of her, and we saw that at the beginning of the first set when they were going after her, trying to get her out of sync for the game, but it didn't simply did not work. Robertson trying to punch one home, and Elena Yates was in the way. And Emily Young has really found something here for UD, as it's five straight for the Flyers. Young, ace. ace. What an incredible serve. Steve Opperman's got to call a timeout. Right. How do you, what, what do you say in that situation? The play before when they had a free ball that was passed, one of the easiest skills in volleyball, passed out of bounds, such a mental mistake. And then that last serve had so much movement on it that, you know, I, I'm not. Dayton, they were down six to five here in the third, but five straight points for the Flyers forces. Steve Opperman to call timeout. And Emily Young has been all over this Dayton run and picking up a couple of aces. Here Robertson trying to score, but it's Dayton dealing with it. And it kill number 17 for the Flyer in that red number four. Alexi Almodovar having another stat stuffing night. And we saw Gabby Arroyo go on a stretch. This is Emily Young's turn. And some sensational serving. And another one. My gosh, it is. Renee, this is. Uh... They are going after Drelling on serve receive. Again, one of the Duke's top hitters to get her out of sync. They're running a stack right now. She's actually in the front row, though they pull her back for serve receive. And, and and she can't she can't pass and go. That's what they're struggling with. She can't get the pass and go going, if you will. Young able to run that down. Free ball played over here by Lodovar. There's Robertson trying to find this open space, and Dayton was all over it. Luxie trying to pick up another kill, but instead it's Henshin. Yates on the cover to the back row. It was Drelling. It's a long point. Elena Yates, can she put it down? No. Henshin getting low. Free ball played over by Hobson. Motivar. Hobson. Trelling. Duquesne. A big point to sort of stay up. 13 7 the count. Elizabeth Trelling. Look at this reaction. Yeah. Nice pass by the Dukes. He's able to give uh, them an, an opportunity to run a quicker set to the outside. McNeil couldn't quite get to the line to cover it, and the Dukes saw it. Christoffic serving. Lanny Yates scoring. Yates, well, Yates coming off a seven kill, four block performance. She's got six kills here tonight. And she is hitting 667. Chris Kaminsky back to the line. Robertson, no. McNeil was there. And kill number 18. 
Karel Munoir. Credit Sarkissian for doing a quick turnaround and fake a one ball. They kept Robertson a little bit slow in the middle block. She didn't quite get to the outside in time. Left to see for Lexi. Young, or excuse me, Kaminsky still serving. And that ball into the antenna. I think there's a question about whether the ball went into the antenna off of which team. Steve Opperman's going to challenge that. Drelling seems to think it went into the antenna off the block, but Shane down on the corner was um, able to immediately signal that it was off of the Duquesne Dukes. So we'll give Mr. Dan Literal an opportunity to review this play. When you've got a bang-bang play like that, Alex, sometimes it's unclear as to who the ball was off of, who, who deflected it into the antenna. And um, if I were the Dukes, what I saw was that it went off of drawing on Duquesne. But if I were the Dukes, I would point at the Flyers also and at least cause this little bit of a review. It, it beats using a timeout. But it looks like uh, the decision has been made pretty quickly. And they are saying it went off of the Flyers. So from the touch, Duquesne able to get the point. And Jolian now will take a seat as we take another look. It's a good call. Tori Newton to serve. Alyssa Miller comes to McNeil, and credit Duquesne. They were all over it, not fooled there. As Lexi was making a run, Miller goes to Caitlin, and Dukes defending with Hobson and Robertson. Motobar flying in. Kristoffic will look towards Henson. Actually, correction, that's Emerson. Schramm. That was a nice swing from Schramm. Great extension. She was able to get inside the block. Newton serving. Oh, just electric. As <laughs> Motomar is getting close to 20. Her 19th kill of this match. And it gives Dayton a 16 point lead. It is Arroyo back to serve for the Flyers. Gabby looking for her fifth ace, but you can't able to play over with Newton. And there's 20. Again, those shorter serves, or I'm sorry, those shorter sets from Miller is just beating Robertson. She cannot get out there. I think the Dukes need to move their block in a little bit more towards the middle of the court to give uh, take that hole away because Almodovar hits it every single time. Of course, that then leaves the line open for Almodovar, and she's very, very adept at hitting line shots as well. Oh, that was excellent from Grimm. Just selling out to keep that ball up. Here's Schramm. Oh, nice dig by Arroyo. Excellent pass from Miller, and it's another kill for Almodovar. Wow. That was a great dig by Grimm, but it looks like she's limping a little bit. Something must have knocked hard on the floor. Uh, Almodovar on that last swing, she just delayed it half a second, gave the block a half a second to come down and then totally used them. Dayton hitting 450 here in the third set. Hitting 373 for the match. And Hobson able to convert there for Duquesne. Avery Hobson to go back and serve. Or excuse me, no, it's Jordan Robertson here to serve for this Duquesne Duke squad. Miller cross court. It's El Motivar. Schramm. Kaminsky and Helm able to score. Dayton had questions of whether she gave Alyssa Miller an opportunity there and see if Coach Horseman challenges. 
It'll be interesting to see what he challenges. I don't know if he's challenging a net. I think that Miller could argue uh, they are challenging a net violation. I think Miller could argue that she was trying to set the ball, and the ball had not yet crossed the plane of the net, and Duquesne interfered by reaching over the plane of the net. That is not a reviewable call, uh, the reaching over the net, the interference call, but I think that they're going to be looking for a net violation here on behalf of the Duquesne Dukes, and it looks like from this replay that perhaps Miller might hit the net at the bottom of the net. Yeah, I, it, Helm is not hitting that net. She goes straight up and comes straight down. And the Indianapolis, Indiana native has had a really nice season in the junior. Looking Mr. for her third point. And strategically, why not use one of your two challengers? We're late in the match. We've got a 2-0. The Flyers have a 2-0 lead from Horseman's perspective. Let's just calm things down a little bit, use a challenge, and see if we can see something. I think this is going to stay with the Dukes, yeah. How about, how about Tim Horseman and Steve Opperman? These two coaches, they have been going at it for a long time. Of course, Coach Opperman, 27 years at Duquesne, but he spent seven years here in the Miami Valley and the head coach of the Wright State Raiders. And he's six wins away from 500. Here's Leona Sarkissian who gets Dayton back on track. Your bread and butter slide. Such an effective uh, attack that Sarkisian has mastered. We see how our serving. Schramm. Dayton had it covered with Arroyo. Boy, Grimm took a nasty spill there. Hobson. This is Russell. Scramble. Schramm. Free ball across. Miller. Slide, Sarkissian, excellent back and forth here. From another free ball, and Sarkissian met at the net. And Rodovar from the back row, Grimm surrounding up Schramm. Who's gonna score this point? Miller was dealt with by Hobson. Here is Hobson scoring for Duquesne. That's a win, those long rallies. In fact, uh, if I recall correctly, the last long, long rally was won by the Duquesne Dukes as well. But Hobson did a great job recognizing that Miller was going to dump the ball, uh, bring it over on the second ball, and she blocked her. That was a very heads up play, kept the ball alive. Serving is Martin. Scoring Sarkissian. Sarkissian's angles, when she runs a slide, she's hitting sharp right, she's hitting right, and then she goes with a line, a medium line shot, if you will. And, you know, Newton should have laid out and at least tried to get a hand on that ball. Dayton trying to make it three. Sarkissian serving. Graham decides to play. This is Henshin. What of our... That was so well done there by Martin. Yates on fire. Elena Yates, it seems like every time they find 17 in red, she's going to score it. A great, great swing. Helm just needs to seal the net. Instead, it trickled between her and the net. The ball fell. The variety of offense that the Dukes are seeing from the Flyers is impressive. Hobson. Here's Yates, trick or treat. And it has just been straightforward for Elena Yates. There's no tricks about it. She is, she is having fun and the smile on her face says it. And why not, she's just, when she's getting a pass like that, uh, good night. Renee, uh, for Dayton, I, I know we, we highlight it so often, but like, Alyssa Miller 
what she's been able to do, so impressive, but the tools that she has around her and, and, and trying to go up against Dayton, good, good luck, because you, you try and stop one thing, opens up uh, a whole other set of problems. Yeah, you know, some unsung heroes that keep the ball alive, and, and don't just keep the ball alive, but keep the ball alive with such precision. Gabby Arroyo, Emily Young, Carissa Kaminsky, those defenders that are able to transitionally pass the ball on a dime. They're putting it right up where Miller needs it so that she can run whatever lane she wants to run. And then you look at the hitters. The hitters all have such a repertoire of angles and speeds and delayed swings, and it just throws the Dukes off just enough. And this is why we're sitting at 22-13 for the Flyers. Anna Sarkisian still serving. Pension. Oh, Lexi. From the back row again. I mean, it, we, we, we only played almost three sets, and, and she's got 22 kills. Yeah. Case in point, though, look at Gabby Arroyo's pass from the Dukes. A hard hit. She passed it on a dime. Miller could put it right, right where Lexi needs it. Martin did a nice job just trying to keep that up, but playing over Henshin, it didn't cross the antenna and going around, and this is going to be match point. Sarkisian. Flyer fans to their feet. Martin. Finding Helm, whoa, look out. Maya Martin, that was a really good, that was a nice set and a, a better score as Helm. Boy, the power that she has the front, it is impressive. That was, she got a very, very well one-on-one -on -one block situation and great, great move, athletic move by Miller. And it keeps that up off the hops and serve. And Miller then gets right back to the net with Yates and is able to block. And Dayton, another dominant performance as they...